We got tons of roads in city skylines. So, why even bother with any other way of transportation? Oh yeah, that's why. All Zero Sims will love you for it. And isn't that what any good way wants? In this guide, we will look at the different means of transportation, how to use them, their strength, their weaknesses, and ultimately, order them in a sort of tier list. Think of transportation as a network with a hierarchical structure. So let us picture an ordinary person going to work. He gives his wife a kiss, then walks to the local bus station. From there, that takes him to the local train station, which takes him to another city, where he takes the bus again and walks the rest of the way to the office. So as you can see, we move up and down the hierarchy. We move up if we want to go to another area, we move down if we want to go to a specific location within the area. And the size of the area depends on where you are in this network. And that's why they are in a sort of order. Use different means of transportation to connect different sizes of areas. Neighborhoods, districts and ultimately cities. Yes, you read that right. Walking. For some reasons, sims tend to walk ridiculous distances when you provide paths around the city. Or maybe it's just lazy me that I can't understand why you would do that. But then again, sims also have no problem with waiting at overcrowded bus stations for days and days. Strange folks. I built this little village here to demonstrate what sims are willing to walk. And for such distances, you might want to provide your sims with some food on the way. And you can actually abuse the goodwill of your sims by simply placing park entrances at both ends. You will make a lot of money. But some people will consider that to be a bad and mean mayor. So, if you want tons of people to leave their car at home, provide paths in and out of important areas. And the possibilities are huge. Even so that you can just skip other means of transportation in local areas, if you provide good paths. But again, that's down to person preference, since a bus cruising through the city or a tram, it just looks good. Taxis are more for tourists, and if you think about it, one taxi usually transports just one customer. So, in terms of efficiency, they are not the best. And again, they are intended for tourism, but where they can add value to your city is on the visual appearance, because in my eyes, it just looks nice when you have a city full of taxis. So in that term, they can provide value for your city. But other than that, I would recommend to use other services. Buses are a good way of transporting sims in a local district, but the limited capacity of 30 people restricts them from being used for more crowded areas or over longer distances. That's simply due to the fact that you will need an absurd amount of buses, which will simply result in a traffic jam since your sims can't enter and exit a bus as fast as they would have to. There is actually kind of a way around that, you would have to build a lot of parallel roads and place bus stops on each side for each road there is. So you basically build a bus hub. The thing is, it still creates a lot of traffic and isn't as efficient as for example a tram, a monorail or a metro. So if you like the look of it, that's okay, but I'd say it's not the, the best way to do it or recommend it. The biggest advantage of buses is their low cost. It's fairly easy to earn money by using buses, but also remember, buses create noise, 
except a few used and new Biofall bosses that come with the Green Cities DLC. Also, try to place your bus stations right next to each other in different directions, so that people from one line can just cross the street and hop into the other line. I had a really hard time deciding whether I want them to list as medium or short distance transportation, but ultimately, they are significantly slower and have less capacity than a monorail or a metro. They can only transport 90 people, and therefore, they belong in here. But you can connect bigger areas. The strength of trams is their independence on the road. The traffic can be horrible and they can just go through the whole mess. Remember on four-way roads, try to place them next to junctions, because in order to get to the tram stations, the sims have to cross the street somewhere. In terms of costs, it's also fairly easy to turn a profit with trams. But then again, we have the visual appearance. In my eyes, it looks fantastic to see trams just woozling around your city. Now we move it up a notch. And no, you're also reading that correctly. When you thought the distances your sims are willing to walk is insane, then wait until you've seen what they're willing to cycle. But keep in mind that cyclists will use normal walking paths, but not the other way around. Also, there are policies to boost cycling. We have the Encourage Biking policy, which simply makes citizens prefer the bike more often over motor vehicles. And we have the bike ban on sidewalks. This policy on the other hand bans bikes from using the sidewalks on regular roads and therefore forces them to either use the dedicated lanes on the cycling type of road or dedicated cycling paths that you can build. The disadvantage of cycling roads is that it lowers the land value slightly and it creates a tiny bit of noise. So what I would suggest is that you build a network of path using the normal pavement path, but also build some cycling paths for areas that are further away, out of reach for usual walking. This will increase the maximum range that sims are willing to cycle, for example to work. Now to metros. Metros score with the little room it uses and the fact that all of it is underground and therefore won't interfere with any other roads and rails you have placed in your city. Also, the speed of a metro is remarkable. Add that to the capacity of 180 people and you've got a serious bad boy in terms of transportation. Metros are best designed in a circular fashion, because if a metro has to turn, it uses both lanes and therefore blocks all other traffic trying to get through. Also keep in mind that it creates noise at the entrance, so place some tree next to it or sound something else than residentials right next to it. For the maximum distance of a metro, well, it suggested that the metro is a, is, a, is a medium distance tool, but as you can see here, you can easily connect cities far away and it has no problem connecting those two. So whether you go train or metro just boils down to whether you like the look of where it is or not, because with the metros, they are hidden. Also metros are a lot cheaper than trains. The monorail is basically a metro, but elevated, and, well, worse, in every aspect. Hmm. They have the same capacity and speed, but they need more space, and most of them restricted to roads. The station creates a ton of noise, and are way bigger than the metro station. So why even bother you might ask? Well, look at it. Isn't it beautiful?
well I said that you can connect faraway areas with metros, the intended way to do it is by using trains. And done correctly, they can transport whole cities worth of people. It has a capacity of 240 and it's faster than any other. Except for airplanes, but those don't transport your sims, only tourists, so they kinda don't count. The biggest weakness is the price. Those things cost a ton of money. And in most cases, you will not turn a profit, not even break even. But the capacity can make it worth to keep people away from driving themselves and therefore keep your streets clear. Where to set up a train network? It's best to think of that at the beginning, because you will need a lot of space to do that. Try to connect the area in circles, so that the train doesn't have to turn at the train station, since, like the metro or the monorail, that will block both lanes and result in a traffic jam. Now, you might rightfully ask, where are ferries, blimps and cable cars? Well, in my eyes, they are more of a gimmick. Well, except of the ferry, maybe, it is kinda a niche. The ferry can connect islands and parts of the city that are best accessible through water. But other than that, they are slow and the capacity isn't that good, so if you can go around it, I would use another mean of transportation. Well, for cable cars, they're kind of a visual thing, I mean if you want to create a tourist mountain center of some kind, then they're the way to go and it looks absolutely beautiful. But they are not intended for being used inside a city. And for blimps, well, blimps are big, have a low capacity, create a ton of noise and are just not suited to transport a lot of people. But again, they add a visual appealing effect to your city, so I think that's where you want to use them, if at all. Now, I want to talk about cargo. When you have a look at the streets, the industry can completely jam your roads. And in order to prevent that, a good way is to provide cargo stations near big industry areas or commercial zones. That's simply to the fact that this way they can import and export goods directly at this station. In combination with the policy, ban heavy traffic, they can make your roads much more clear and also reduce noise. You can either go for the cargo train station or the cargo airport. Just keep in mind that it will ultimately result in red numbers on your budget since they don't bring any income, they just cost you a weekly cost. But they can help lower the traffic in your city, so I think it's still worth it. Alright. That's all I have for this video. I hope it was helpful to some people and I hope you learned something and may do something different in your next city. If you do, tell me in the comment section below, hit that like button and, and subscribe if you liked what you saw. Until next time.